How's it going? For today's video, I'm proud to present an exclusive, up close and personal, in depth look at the all new 2015 Porsche Macan Turbo. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the Macan. We'll start right up to the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, take it on a quick test drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. Before we begin, as a courtesy, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Auto Nation and their Porsche Plano store located in Plano, Texas, for providing us with the all new Macan Turbo featured in today's in depth review. For more information on their dealership or current inventory, see the description box below or check out PorschePlanoTexas.net. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let it run. Like other vehicles in the newest Porsche family, the Macan also features a standard remote smart key access system so you can lock and unlock the vehicle via the touch sensors on all four of the door handles. To lock it, just make sure the key fob is in your pocket so the vehicle's proximity sensors detect it, then locate the little depressed portion on each of the handles and just tap it. Two beeps indicate locking. Then after waiting a second, just grab the handle, there's a touch sensor located behind it, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. The exterior is finished in a deep gloss black and paired nicely with a full black perforated premium leather interior with brushed aluminum trim found throughout. To start the vehicle, look to the left-hand side of the steering wheel and you'll find the traditional Porsche ignition switch. Only in this vehicle, it's actually a fixed mechanism so you don't actually have to insert your key or anything like that. It works with the vehicle's key fob so the vehicle automatically detects that you have it within the interior. Then you just put your foot on the brake and flick it to the right to start. The Macan features an electromechanical variable ratio steering system, a first for Porsche crossover. Even though the steering rack was borrowed from Audi's Q5, the Macan has been tuned to deliver more road feel and feedback, in addition to a quicker ratio of 14.3 to 1 compared to the Q5's 15.9 to 1. Its speed proportional design builds up resistance and precision at higher speeds, while relaxing for ease of use at low speeds. One of the interior highlights is the new three-spoke sport steering wheel inspired by the 918 hypercar. The hollow spokes evoke a racy look, while the upper spokes house simple multifunction controls. The thick rim and soft leather provides good grip with comfortable thumb rests in the middle and big bolsters up top. Giving the Macan an extra edge of performance over the competition is Porsche's excellent PDK 7-speed dual-clutch automated manual gearbox, routed through a polished aluminum and leather gear selector. If desired, you can shift the vehicle manually via the selector below or by the aluminum steering wheel mounted panel shifters. For improved economy, there's a standard coasting feature that allows the transmission to decouple from the engine when you take your foot off the gas, allowing it to coast without engine braking. In addition to active grille shutters, standard auto start stop feature, and a brake energy regen system that automatically charges the battery when the brakes are applied. 
Downshifts are accompanied by subtle throttle blips in both sport automatic and manual modes. Lest we not forget, the Macan is also about performance. The optional Sport Chrono system adds launch control and an additional Sport Plus mode, while the optional Porsche Adaptive Suspension Management system feeds into the vehicle's standard Sport mode that hastens the already quick gear changes, firms up the dampers, increases throttle response, firms up the steering, and opens up the dual mode exhaust. An electronically controlled limited slip differential is available. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic by Xenon Protector headlamps, front and rear fog lamps, and the hazards. Of course, all four windows are fully automatic. And we're going to check out the exterior. Over the last decade or so, there's been somewhat of a shift when it comes to the interests of the modern luxury vehicle buyer. With an increased focus on efficient practicality without sacrifice, the luxury crossover or CUV segment has flourished. Compared to the traditional body-on-frame SUV, a crossover usually incorporates a car-based platform with the added benefits you would find in an SUV such as superior passenger and cargo hauling with a driving profile similar to that of a car. You typically have more efficient power plants and in some cases the option of all-wheel drive. As Porsche expands its model portfolio to incorporate a wider variety of clientele, the all-new Macan represents their first entry into the segment, currently populated by other well-known luxury offerings such as the BMW X3, Audi Q5, Mercedes GLK, and more. While all have their own design merits, the only thing lacking, perhaps aside from Audi's SQ5, is performance and excitement, two words Porsche is all too familiar with. Keeping that in mind, their goal is to create the best sports car in each segment they venture into, from the benchmark 911 to the wildly successful Cayenne. With the Macan, Porsche has now introduced the excitement benchmark for the luxury CUV segment, blending performance and comfort with enhanced utility. The Macan, which is Indonesian for Tiger, rides on a variant of Volkswagen Group's modular longitudinal platform strategy which also provides the architectural principles for many Audi products. It shares its basic chassis and wheelbase with the Audi Q5, along with its power steering unit, rear brakes, basic suspension architecture, and a few other ancillary bits, which only make up about 20% of the total components. Everything else from the way it looks to the way it performs and handles has been designed and tuned to evoke the signature feel you would find in a rear-wheel drive Porsche sports car. When compared to the Q5, the Macan differs quite a bit in size, with it being 1.3 inches shorter in height, 1.7 inches longer in length, and even boasts a 1.5 inch wider track. Its broad 911 inspired rear flanks accentuate the wider rear wheels. Compared to the SQ5, an entry level Macan S actually weighs about 300 pounds less. This gives the Macan a noteworthy sports car-like profile that's long, low, and wide, that with a drag coefficient of .36 is relatively aerodynamic for the class. Wearing Porsche's familiar CUV design language, the Macan bears some familiar resemblance to the larger Cayenne, incorporating various 911 and 918 hypercar styling cues for a very unique look. Compared to the Cayenne, the Macan is 5.7 inches shorter and rides on a 3.5 inch shorter wheelbase with nearly identical width. While hard to notice with the black exterior, there are unique side blades that extend across the doors above the rockers that visually lower the vehicle. These are black on the S, painted to match on the turbo, or can be finished in glossy carbon fiber. The clamshell hood is composed of two sandwiched pieces of aluminum featuring integrated duct systems that take in air from around the headlamps and feed it to the twin intakes that sit above the engine. The rear hatch is also aluminum while the rest of the body panels are steel. Unique turbo touches include LED grill slats on either side and rectangular exhaust outlets out back that replace the standard circular pipes. At launch, the Macan is available with your choice of two dry sump twin turbo V6 power plants, including a smaller 340 horsepower 3 liter borrowed from the new Panamera S and a 3.6 liter derived from the entry Panamera, but produces 400 horsepower in this application. 
Even though both engines feature twin turbocharging, only the 3.6 liter is officially dubbed Macan Turbo, providing class leading performance numbers. The smaller engine is found in the Macan S. Porsche's traction management permanent all-wheel drive system is standard, a torsion-based system that incorporates a multi-plate center clutch and locking rear differential. Unlike standard fixed torque split configurations, the PTM system on the Macan sends about three quarters of the torque to the rear wheels for a rear drive sports car feel. It also provides infinite variability of torque distribution between the front and rear axles in as little as 100 milliseconds. Power is sent to the front wheels through an open differential only when wheel slip is detected. In extreme cases, 100% of the torque can be sent to the front or rear. Even though the Macan was designed with performance in mind, it's still capable of light duty off-road tasks. With the off-road mode activated by a button in the center console, the Macan is then optimized for the best traction in low grip scenarios when traveling under 50 miles an hour. PDK shift points are altered, as is the traction control, throttle, the shocks are firmed, and the all-wheel drive system is prepped for faster front axle power distribution. Enhancing its cornering ability, a torque vectoring system is also available that applies slight brake pressure to the inside wheel for tighter turn-ins. The entry Macan S with its suspension features a lightweight steel spring setup, but with the Macan Turbo you receive Porsche's active suspension management, which can electronically adapt the suspension between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus modes. An optional air suspension can be paired with the adaptive dampers, which replaces the steel springs with air springs for improved ride quality and load leveling. Air suspension cars ride slightly lower and have the extra benefit of being able to raise and lower the vehicle on demand, varying by 3.5 inches, and of course it's also tied to the off-road and sport modes. Whether you're lowering for entry and exit or loading up cargo, raising it from the standard Macan 7.8 inch ground clearance to more than 9 inches of ground clearance in the off-road mode. When that ground clearance is highest, approach, departure, and breakover angles are 24.8, 23.6, and 17.1 degrees respectively. The Macan's performance nature continues to its staggered wheels. Unlike the Cayenne, the rear wheels are wider than the front with wheel sizes ranging from 18 to 21 inches in diameter. Here we have the optional 21 inch 911 turbo design wheels wrapped in Michelin Latitude Sport tires, two 6540s in front and two 9535s in the rear. Brakes on the Macan S consist of four-wheel internally ventilated discs measuring 13.8 inches in front with silver six-piston fixed calipers and 13 inches in the rear with single-piston calipers that are able to bring the vehicle to a stop in 119 feet from 60 miles an hour. The turbo retains the same calipers but are now finished in red with larger discs, 14.1 inches in front and 14 inches in the rear with improved stopping distances to just 102 feet from 60 miles an hour. Porsche also offers class-exclusive carbon ceramic brakes with yellow calipers for superior performance in demanding scenarios. As far as the suspension, similar to the Audi Q5, it's a fully independent setup with aluminum 5-arm double wishbone setup up front and self-tracking trapezoidal link design in the rear. Overall length is 185 inches with the width around 76.3 inches and a height of 63.4 inches right on a 110.5 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight for the turbo, depending on how equipped, begins around 4,244 pounds. So let's go ahead and pop the hood. As we touched on earlier, the Macan is currently available with two engines. The turbo packs an all-aluminum, direct-injected, twin-turbocharged 3.6-liter V6. Weighing in at just 470 pounds, it's just 3 pounds heavier than the 3-liter. The engine packs a dry sump lubrication system, which allows more uniform oiling during high-speed cornering. It also allows the engine to be set lower in the chassis, reducing in the lower center of gravity. Featuring double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio for the turbo, Vario Cam Plus, and a red line of 6,700 RPM. With 17.4 psi of boost, it produces 400 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 406 pound feet of torque at 1350 RPM. This translates to a manufacturer claimed 0 to 60 time of 4.6 seconds or 4.4 seconds when equipped with the Sport Chrono Pack a drag-limited top speed of 165 miles an hour. 
The Macan S carries a twin turbo 3 liter V6 with 14.5 psi of boost and produces 340 horsepower and 339 pound feet of torque, with claimed 0 to 60 times as low as 5 seconds with a top speed of 156 miles an hour. As far as the fuel economy, Macan carries a 19.8 gallon fuel tank. While running on regular premium fuel, EPA estimates range between 17 miles to a gallon in the city and 23 on the highway. The Macan is the latest vehicle in the Porsche lineup to receive the newest design language, which includes a sloping center console originally inspired by the Carrera GT. Build quality as you would expect is stellar with soft leathers and padded material wrapping the panels in key touch points, splashed with optional brushed aluminum and additional polished metals throughout. Like any Porsche, the vehicle is highly customizable, from wood and carbon fiber inlays to different color leathers, seat belts, upgraded audio systems, and more. Across the door you have your power windows, window lockouts, power mirrors, and folding function, not to mention the power rear lift gate. A little bit of detail in the brushed aluminum trim, like I said, that could be had in wood or carbon fiber. You do have padded leather across the armrest, two-person memory that is an optional feature, as well as your lock and unlock located up top. The standard seats consist of 8-way power adjustment with a combination of leather and Alcantara inserts, but this vehicle has the upgraded perforated leather 14-way comfort seats with adjustable thigh support and 4-way power lumbar. You can also opt for 18-way adaptive sports seats with multi-contour design to adjust the lateral support. The perforations keep everything nice and ventilated for the available heating and cooling features. You can opt for the Porsche Crest to be embossed on top of the headrest, which are adjustable, as are the seat belts. Side curtain airbags and airbags found throughout, unique Macan turbo logoed aluminum door sills, and the steering wheel can be had with the optional heating function. There's also plenty of safety features now available from the Macan, including lane keeping assist, lane departure warning, collision warning, adaptive cruise, and more, not to mention an Alcantara headliner and full panoramic glass roof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. So we're going to shut her up. A 235-watt 11-speaker audio system is standard, while the turbo features the upgraded Bose surround sound system with 14 speakers including subwoofer and a total of 545 watts. A top-tier 16-speaker 1000-watt Burmeister surround sound system is also available, fed through a 7-inch LCD mobile media navigation telemetrics interface. For a thorough look at how the infotainment system works, click the link in the annotation below or in the description box below to be taken to a previous review I've already done on a 2014 Porsche Panamera 4S. Side airbags with Alcantara lined A-pillars that flow down from the headliner grip handles, and Alcantara line visors, little card holder, and vanity mirror. 
the rear view mirror is auto dimming. Up top, you have the controls for the vehicle's interior illumination, as well as LED reading lamps, turning off your parking sensors, the repositioned garage home link, hands-free Bluetooth microphone, controls for your automatic sunshade, and the roof itself. A wind deflector automatically pops up, and the piece of glass rises up and over that the rear glass. With the sunshade in place, the sun isn't completely blocked, so you still get a little bit of extra light, but it's greatly reduced. Right beneath the radio, you have a little hideaway faceplate that you can pull back and reveals your CD changer. Your SIM card input is also located down below. Down below here is your standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control. I'll pull the shifter back so you can see it a little bit better. Give your temperature on either side, independent fan speed, different zones for either side, even independent automatic for either side. Front and rear defrost, recycling, sinking both sides, and two small digital displays up top. Zones are three-stage heated and ventilated seating. They can actually work simultaneously. The different drive modes and electronic parking brake like we talked about earlier, 12 volt power outlet, two adjustable cup holders, and a padded center console. Houses your USB, iPod auxiliary integration, and another power outlet. It's also lined in felt. As far as the steering wheel, on the left hand side you have your radio volume, bringing up your telephone and the driver info screen, off hook and on hook buttons, back button, and a little wheel that controls the different functions of the driver info system, which is really quite intuitive, packs a lot of stuff. So you have your hands-free telephone, use the wheel to scroll through the different options, audio, vehicle settings, including turbo boost, and other necessary status gauges, the sport chrono system, which I'll show you in just a second, torque split, tire pressure monitoring system, as well as trip computer and fuel data, navigation, and back to your telephone. So to go a little bit deeper into the features, you would click down on that little wheel. You can start it, stop it, continue, reset, and more. Basically for like track times and the like. All sport chrono systems are routed through this beautiful clock in the dash, whereas like you can see here, it functions as a typical analog clock with a digital readout in the middle. Now if you start the chrono system, it automatically begins a stopwatch. Like I said, you can stop it, continue it, and reset it. Once you exit the Sport Chrono system, it automatically returns to being a clock. On the right hand side, you have your automatic rain sensing windshield wipers, activating the rear wiper and front headlamp washers, parking lamps, high beams, and turn signals, and your cruise control located in the very bottom. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. Because of its smaller package, the Macan is going to have less rear seat space than a Cayenne, but it still offers rear seat occupants a nice, well appointed back seat that's comfortable both in longer trips with reasonable headroom. Just like the front, rear seat occupants also get a nice amount of luxury touches including the leather wrapped door panels, the brushed aluminum trim, available 3 zone climate control, and heated seats for the rear. There's also a set of manual sunshades that can be released across the rear doors. Even though the Macan represents a smaller crossover entry to the Cayenne, there's still plenty of room back here and just like the front, nicely appointed with plenty of Alcantara, soft leathers, and even heated seats. Climbing in isn't too hard, and the doors also evoke that nice solid feel. Overall space, I'm around 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 with a comfortable seating position for myself up front. I probably have about two or so inches of leg space and one to one and a half inches of head space. The nice thing about the Macan is, especially with this roof open, there's still a whole lot of wiggle room up here. You don't really have to sacrifice like you do with some conventional type sunroofs. The three-stage heated seats for both sides and an extra 12-volt power outlet. Coat hooks mounted up in the B pillars, as well as up top with extra grip handles, and your LED reading lamps for the back seat. Small quarter windows in the back for better visibility, not to mention side airbags. In the middle here, 
You can sit three people in a little bit of a pinch because this drivetrain hump is a little high, but there's a padded leather center console with two adjustable cup holders and an adjustable third headrest if you sat somebody smaller here. Backseat comfort is absolutely fantastic. Porsche included a ton of padding down below and up top, and there's a phenomenal amount of lower back support. This could be a really comfortable traveling vehicle. There's not a whole lot of lateral support, but just a little bit across the bottom and the top. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? You can open the power rear lift gate two different ways, either the remote fob or by the button located on the driver's door. Because of the raked roof line, it's a little bit less cargo space than you would typically see in a CUV, but it's still respectable as 17.7 .7 cubic feet, which should be just enough to haul any amount of average luggage. Here's some storage pockets on top of the privacy cover and off to the right hand side. When you fold the seats down, it greatly expands to 53 cubic feet of cargo space. There's also some cargo tie downs and your jack and equipment and spare tires located underneath. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustment, including the thigh support like you find on the driver's seat. Locking glove box down below, lined in felt with illumination. The Porsche Macan, like the Cayenne, not only expands the company's customer base, but also provides the capital needed to fund some amazing projects such as the Carrera GT and 918 Spider. If you're looking for a stylish CUV that packs a punch and dares to be different, then the Macan is definitely worth considering, especially with its high level of individuality. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2015 Porsche Macan Turbo. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.